Molly here on the Latino Slant. Thanks for uh, coming on by and checking out this very special video. If you're not yet subscribed, make sure you are. And if you are, go ahead and uh, tell 100 of your closest family members about the Latino Slant and have them subscribe now. <gasps> Polly here on the Latino Slant. If you've seen my spoiler uh, review of the Blue Beetle and have come on over to this one, then you know what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the Latinidad of Blue Beetle from the supernatural to the familia. Paul, what are you talking about? What is this thing, Latinidad? Is it a different race? Is it a different language? Uh, I don't get it. I'm not Latino. Calm down. I got you. First of all, <laughs> there's only one race. <laughs> and because we're the different parts of the world than which we uh, uh, hail from, uh, we just look differently, right? So in this iteration of the Blue Beetle Jaime Reyes, he is a he is a uh, comes from a Mexican family. And what they've decided to do with this iteration of the family is that he's a first generation Mexican American. His parents and his grand grand grandparent, uh, his nana came over from Mexico. I say supernatural to familia. Now, before I get into that, I want to talk about the world vision of this. What Soto did and Alcocer did, and I would say pretty successfully is that they, they presented a world in which Latinos are just as if. They are part of the bigger world. Now, this whole thing of the Latino representation has been bastardized so much and been done so poorly in the past, in the recent past, that this is completely different than a Namor that was represented and changed to being part of this Marvel world, which was, you know, you know my thoughts on that. You can check out that video. Here, I argue that there is no Latino representation. It is as if it's part of the world, told through people who happen to come from this part of the world. Feel me? Right? Like a godfather, like the Vikings, you know, we all connected to the universal tones of the film, the themes. And yes, we all maybe wanted to like, you know, talk like, uh, you know, like the godfather, you know, uh, cook some meatballs and, you know, uh, some spaghetti or, you know, like a Viking. We all wanted to scream uh, skull and, you know, Valhalla, like in Thor. That's what this does. That's what this does, and it does it really well. I talk about the supernatural. Spoiler, guys. In the, in the film, Jaime Reyes' dad, Alberto Reyes, passes away. And it's heart-wrenching. It is tragic. But they have a couple of moments in where uh, Alberto is saying, says to him, look, we're here. We're trying to find our, our place in the world, but we're going to figure it out together, even if you don't know Jaime. But look at this. He uses a, a, a device, a cinematic device of a cactus. Swear to God, front, front yard. He says, when I got here, Jaime, and we all got here, I planted this little cactus. And it's grown over the years to, this, to become this beautiful plant just like you and your sister. I mean, I was like all in. I was all in. That cactus, you know, in a silly cinematic device, so, so, you know, so kind of like a minute in this whole film is so powerful. And they do that. Soto and Alcocer, the writer and the, and the director, the director and writer, do that constantly in this film to where, whether it's a, 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 a cactus, you know, or, or a, a song from uh, uh, whether it's a Mexican song or a salsa song or a rock and espanol song. It's part of this tapestry that they don't have to explain who they are. They don't like to explain the music. It just is. Which I thought was fantastic. Now, let's go back to the supernatural, the supernatural with the father. He passes away. 
There's a moment where Jaime Reyes is captured. This is well after the father has died, which is gut wrenching. Where Jaime is is, is in, in induced coma, being controlled by Jenny Cord. They want to take out the scare out of him, the DNA codes, all that stuff. He's space tripping in his head. Yes, he is in the twilight zone. And it's the cosmos. And he wakes up and he sees his father sitting in his front yard with the cactus. Behind him are candles and candelabras. It is a homage to one of the greatest Mexican movies called uh, Macario. In which this man, the father, Macario, wants the best for his next generation. And Jaime is lost. He's lost. And he can, he can easily just completely die. But his father says, I've realized this is, this is my purpose, is to be here with you at this moment and, for, and to tell you to not be afraid of the Blue Beetle and to completely embody it. And you see way far off in the cosmos, in space, a floating blue beetle, this kind of magical realism moment. It, it, you know, the the vision is, is so, you know, yes, paying homage to uh, Macario, but also to uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit of sci-fi fantasy in that the dad becomes, you know, is this ghost and he's a force a force of good and tells his son to go get him, go get the blue beetle. And you see Jaime just jump off the, off the lawn into space, hitting that connection. That's probably one of my, if not my favorite moment in the film. And it tells me too, that the vision, the vision of the Latinidad is for everyone. It's, it's the cosmos, it's life and death. It's familial in the sense we've all been a part of a family, whatever, however, uh, you know, uh, traumatic, dysfunctional or wonderful your family has been to. You can connect to this Latinidad as if. Now, part of this Latinidad is that, yes, there are some perceived um, injustices that the, direct, that the director and writer put in there. But like with any world. That's part of our existence. And we talked about uh, being from different parts of the world. And in this part of the world, there's been a lot of injustice, whether it's done by the Europeans, by uh, colonizing forces, or to ourselves. What we do to each other, it's in this film. I would like to say, for the most part, it's, 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 it's not ham-fisted. There's maybe one or two that are, but they're very quick. But that's life. This asset of a world vision in which we're part of this tapestry that we uh, call life and this our existence in this universe is done beautifully in this film. It is a huge asset to the moviegoer, whether you're Latino or not. Uh, and it's something very unique to an origin story. Besides Sholo Maridueña, this probably is one of an, a great selling point uh, to this film that shouldn't be up for discussion in regards to a an ignorant uh, uh, kind of lazy take that, oh, well, it's identity politics. It's not for me. Let me tell you guys, the Latino slant has your back. This movie is for you and you will totally enjoy it and you totally enjoy the ride. Check out my full uh, review as well as all our other Blue Beetle coverage. It's finally out. Let me know your thoughts and wherever you're at. Keep that sign for it. Gracias.